Joseph YouTube, welcome to the Coffee Pod. My name is Chishi Zed. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Andrew Tate's first interview with BBC. So guys, what I'd like you to do before I play this interviews after you're done watching the full version this is the full unedited version make sure you go over to bbc and check out the condensed edited version of this almost 40 minute interview that was condensed to 12 minutes yes and heavily edited to um make andrew tate appear dangerous i mean they, they didn't even they didn't they didn't do that they didn't even do a good job making him look bad, but they tried their best and they literally took, took out a big chunk of that whole interview. I've been honest about my thoughts about the whole case concerning Tristan and Andrew Tate. I've been honest about things I disagreed with and you guys know my overall stance. I think overall he's a net positive for men. Things like accusing him of grape. Those are things that have not been proven and actually you'll find out that that case was actually thrown out by the judge and the fact that he was locked up for that long and no charges yet have been um, pressed on him is worth talking about. But that's not exactly what happened in this interview. Um, I think this is like Andrew Tate's first interview with like a mainstream platform. And like guys, I've always said, if they have evidence, show the actual evidence, not he said, she said, vice interviews that are heavily um, woke leaning. But we can't allow people to come out here and accuse any man because it might be you right it might be the next man it might be me or whatever and they can say whatever they want without evidence and because the people who disagree with you want to believe that you are a bad person then make that the actual narrative and go off the feelings of others instead of the facts we can't allow that to be the way that we run any type of justice system anyways guys without any further ado let's get it Andrew Tate hello you've agreed to do an interview with the BBC today yep the material is going to be published on television on radio online perfect we are doing an interview with you because you're facing some very serious allegations correct human trafficking, yep. and also because there's a great deal of concern about the things you say and the impact that they have on young people, on women. I don't think the concerns about the things I say, I think the concern is for the level of influence I have and the reach I have. I would argue that a lot of the things that are already out there inside of the legacy media and the matrix as a whole are far more damaging than the things I say. The concern about the influence you have being a harmful influence, but let's start with the allegations. Not necessarily a harmful influence. The fact that I have, I'm massively influential over the youth, and I understand that, but it's my influence as a whole which people are afraid of, not necessarily the things I say. Let's start with the allegations. Have you anybody? Absolutely not. Have you trafficked anybody? Absolutely not. Exploited any women for Absolutely money? Absolutely not. But you have admitted using emotional manipulation to get women to work in the webcam industry for you. No. Firstly, let's, let's begin. At the, let's start at the beginning. I'm facing charges. The one, the first one you mentioned, the one was already thrown out by a judge because there's no evidence of it. I have to say that again because that's in the interview that BBC released. They didn't want to say this, right? The grape charge has been thrown out by the judge because there's no evidence behind it. Why wasn't it included in the official interview? I don't know, but thank goodness that they decided to set up a camera, which was probably part of the agreement because they knew what they were going to do. They decided to set up a camera to record this whole interview separately, just in case they decided to lie. Lie and serve the people tea and not coffee. No, um, I'll have a tea actually. Let's keep watching. Secondly, it's very difficult for me to sit here and have a very frank and honest conversation with you while we're in the territory of Romania about a legal case that's going on within Romania. I have to protect myself. I've agreed to do an interview with you, and I want to be as honest with you as possible, but I can't incriminate myself in any way, and I have to be very careful with what I talk about. There are no charges yet. Correct. There the are no charges. Said that there are no charges, and I've, and I've agreed to speak to you, but I have to be as honest and frank as I can while also protecting myself and following my legal counsel. So let's talk about what you've said yourself then. You have said on the website for your original website for the Hustlers University that you emotionally manipulated women 
to fall in love with you so that you could get them working in the sex industry for your financial gain? As I said, I have to be very careful with what I say, but let's put it this way. No women are coming out against me and accusing me of doing it. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Who? There's testimony from the current investigation. The current investigation, which I cannot discuss, which I know intimately and you don't, I can tell you right now that the, late, the women who are in this case file, there are two American women who have been caught already admitting they're lying, and then nobody else is accusing me of anything. Ah, that's very messed up, right? Uh, this is for my passport bros. I know you guys are thinking American women. <laughs> it had to be the American chicks to uh, lock down uh, Tate. I mean, mercy. And listen, I'm not somebody who, even though, you know, I'm, I was born in a foreign country, my uh, woman is actually from America. I've taken her back to Zambia. She's well acquainted with my culture, etc. But yeah, the, unfortunately, this is where these vicious women who are going to um, accuse you of things falsely, no one does it better than the Me Too um, roots, which that's from here in America. To begin with, it's very common in cases like this that the alleged victims do not always see themselves as victims. Well, that's very interesting. It's actually extremely interesting because if I was a matrix controlled organization, my goal was to slander somebody and try and destroy their name. You're telling me that they've chosen a crime, which one is heinous, of course, because it damages the person's credibility. And two, you're saying that even if everyone else involved, if you have five people and everyone's sitting there saying, no, nobody's hurt anybody, we like Andrew, we've all worked together, or we're friends, etc. That's not what everybody's saying. Um, no. let, let me read you some of the testimony from the current investigation. Can I finish, one, my, of, can I finish this? one of the witnesses can, said... Can I finish, please? You're not answering the can question I, I asked please? you. You're not answering the question I asked you. I am answering the question. You're let saying, me read you the you're, testimony you're of saying, one of the witnesses. You're saying the people who are involved in this, even if they say they're not victims, that they're still going to try and attack me and pretend they're, they're victims. They are treated as victims by the case that's ongoing. Let, and not all of them are saying that. One of the witnesses says... We can't just we, we can't go into the case. The case is open and active. Well, let's just be clear that not all of the witnesses in the case are behaving in the way you describe, and even those that are, it doesn't bar them from being treated as victims by the prosecution by the case. We have an open criminal investigation. I am absolutely not really sure I'll be found innocent. I know the case better than you. I know it intimately, and you don't. I have seen all the criminal files and the evidence against me, and you haven't. I know the truth of what happens, and you don't. And I'm telling you absolutely and utterly, I've never hurt anybody, that the case that's been put against me is completely and utterly fabricated, and I'm never going to be found guilty of anything. And it's very difficult for me to answer your in-depth questions because we're sitting here inside of the territory of Romania. I am beholden to the Romanian legal system, and I'm not going to incriminate myself because you're trying to prod me. You are wrong, and we're going to have to accept that for now and, ask, and, and talk about something else. Let me read you then what you have said about sure. what you have done. Sure. You have said... My job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, get her to fall in love with me to the point where she'd do anything I say and then get her on webcam so we, we could become rich together. I don't think that's what I personally said. I think that's, that's exactly what no, you said that's, on that's, 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 No, I've never said that. That's something that you found on the internet. Doesn't mean I've said it. And, and, and again, once again, if any female on the planet has a problem with me, I strongly recommend her to go to the police and try and pursue me for criminal charges. It's actually very interesting that me, one of the most famous people in the world, who's been vilified by the legacy media and placed it all over the internet, while everyone has attacked me from every single angle, while federal agencies from multiple countries have called over 2,000 women who know me, we stand here. Sheesh. 2,000 women? Is that what they actually did? They contacted 2,000 women who knew Andrew? That's crazy, man. Think about that for a little bit. Imagine right now if the government was looking through every piece of technology you had history search right um seeing all the stuff you've been watching you know what i mean <laughs> and um contacting your exes those bitter exes trying to get any one of them probably bribing who knows right i'm speculating here trying to find any shred of evidence to paint you in a bad light and they can't find anything as far as we know so far they haven't brought anything to support the case that the worst things that they want to believe about andrew tate are true and i'm not saying the guy is an angel but who truly is i mean this woman definitely is not she's definitely coming to this interview with an agenda i'm sure there are people who 
you know, fell out with Andrew in the past who could have lied. I'm surprised more of that didn't happen. But I think those blurred faces and interviews of women crying are definitely scorned women, if you ask me. Let's keep watching. Zero new accusations since my arrest. Zero. If you took any famous person, any man of substantial wealth, and you called 2,000 women who knew him, mm. you'd find an ex-girlfriend is upset, somebody who wants money who's upset. They called 2,000 people who knew me and could not find a single woman to make a new complaint. The, the, only, com the only complaints they have against me are the initial complaints, which we can prove are lies, and that's where it stands. So I do, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and allow you to pretend that I'm some kind of evil predator, when actually I'd argue the fact, I'd argue the fact that people who've been investigated to the level I've been investigated to, if you were to take the average man on the street and investigate his entire life for 14 months, call everyone who's ever known him, and vilify him in the media, and encourage people to come forward for money, and you try to contact every ex-girlfriend he's ever had. Would, would come forward and accuse those people of and I think that you would have a lot more. I think you would have a lot more flack than I've got. I'm actually such a nice person that the I've BBC never had anyone. Spoken come. to somebody since your arrest who says exactly those things. That with you, it's all manipulation. There's an ulterior. Is this Sophie? Everything is this Sophie? Done. Oh, it's Sophie. The, the, the fake name, no face, no one, so the story that was invented. I was to please him and wanting him to be happy. Fake name. That I was just kind of yeah, okay, do whatever you want. And what is she? Accused, has she accused me of a crime? This imaginary Sophie. She's making the point that there is. Has she accused me of a crime? Emotional or psychological manipulation. I've asked you a question and I've allowed you into my house. I'm asking you a question. Correct, but you're not the boss here because I've allowed you into my house. I'm asking you the question. Correctly, and I'm telling you. You get to decide the answers. No, we're equal here. I've allowed you into my house. You don't come here with a position of authority. I'm doing you the favor as legacy media, giving you relevance by speaking to you. And I'm telling you now, this Sophie, which the BBC has invented, which is no face of, nobody knows who she is. The and BBC did not invent Of her. course not. And she, because you never invent anything. And she has not filed, she's not filed criminal charges against me. What are we talking about here? So this is a faceless chick. I notice how this BBC interviewer, this chick is trying to assert dominance in Andrew Tate's house when they've probably wanted to interview him. He they probably went to go find him, not the other way around. What is she saying? talking about emotional manipulation. Has she... the sex industry for your financial gain. Absolute garbage. She has not filed criminal... This person, if they exist, has not filed criminal charges against me. I welcome anybody who believes I've harmed them, male or female, any point in the past, to file criminal charges against me, I'll fight them. I know who I am, I know what I've done, and I know the truth, and I know that I'll be found innocent of this attack. The reason I'm being attacked is because of my massive influence, not because I've ever hurt anybody. And for you to sit here and say that everybody around you is saying you're innocent, but that doesn't matter because the state will say they're victims, and they're just gonna grab everybody you know and call everybody victims, even if they say they're not, and try and put you in jail, you are describing a matrix attack. You're not describing human trafficking. I'm describing women who are going to court to accuse you of human trafficking. We will see what women go. To, we will see this? what women go to court at the end of this trial. Please? We'll see which women go. Can to I court. finish, please? We'll see which women go to court. I'm describing women who are going to court to accuse you of human Sophie trafficking. Sophie hasn't gone to court. Sophie and doesn't exist. And I'm describing women who have spoken to the BBC at length. Sophie doesn't exist. And other media ex organisations about what they say is emotional manipulation and coercion. And I'm quoting back to you your own words. Where you describe they're not my words. coercion. They're words you found. Where are these women? Where are they? Where are these women? Because even the chicks I've seen, the, like the ones that have actually showed their face, that have had sad stories to tell, the sad stories are, oh, I was dating one of the Tates and he broke my heart, right? <laughs> he broke my heart and he promised, you know, love and all these things. Guys, if, if, if that's the case, how many women who you've broken up with in a date can come to you and say, oh, you didn't present yourself as someone who I thought you were and you misled me. That's not grounds for manipulation. And I'm talking about the people, the women who show their face, like the one chick from Valuetainment. Let's keep watching. Words you found on the internet and Sophie doesn't exist. On your so let's website, move on to the next subject. Your voice. Move on to the next subject. No, I think I'll stick on this one for a minute. So there's other places in that same website where you say you get girls to fall in love with you and they do it because they love you, because they want to do what you say. Convincing women to take part in some kind of business arrangement doesn't work long term because they're emotional. You've got to get them to fall in love with you. What's That's coercion. That's emotional manipulation. That's abuse. What you found are clips from the internet some text from the internet, and you're gonna sit here and tell me that that's the reason I should be Your website, it. your words. It's not my website. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Check my website. Next. It's the website you've taken down, and I wonder why those comments have been taken down. No, website, no website's been taken down. My website is the same, it's been the same for a very long time. The comments on this website, 
on the original website have been taken down, and I wonder why. You are accusing me, I'm guessing, what you're trying to say is you're accusing me, and you're trying to say that I'm guilty of the things I'm accused of. Who is this chick, and I wonder why? And I'm emotionally I... manipulating people. I'm saying that you have said you emotionally manipulated people here for your own financial gain. No, absolutely not. And I'm asking you about that. Absolutely not is the answer. I look forward to the end of this trial, I look forward to clearing my name. I look forward to the BBC and the legacy media having to say not guilty and having to tell the truth. As I've said before, the only other person who's been found despite absolute rigorous, destructive levels of investigation and prodding into my life mm. is this imaginary Sophie by the BBC who doesn't exist. And if you were to find any single other man on earth and try and analyze his life forensically to the level they've done mine, you would find genuine damage to people. I don't hurt people. It's not just- Thousands of women have come out in my defense. Thousands of women have come out in my defense and you've not mentioned that. Thousands of women come out in my defense. Because the problem is when women accuse you of serious crimes. Okay, and emotional but let's agree that That's thousands of women- uh, Let's agree that it's thousands- It's not the problem that some people say you haven't done it. It's a problem that some people say you have. Thousands of women come out in my defense and as we stand right now, we have an open criminal investigation. People who are involved in the criminal investigation are saying we're not victims of anything. Andrew's fine, he's never hurt us. You're saying no, I have the opposite to that, I have the counter to that. I have someone called Sophie with no face, a fake name, who we've invented, and she's not accusing you of anything criminal. So there is nothing more threatening to society today than a strong masculine man. They want so much to believe that these women were taken advantage of. The fact that he may actually not have done those things is just such a bitter reality for modern society, feminists, modern women, that they just, they refuse to accept it. They refuse to accept it. I don't see the whole point well, you're trying to make You say you manipulate women, they say you manipulate women. Why wouldn't people think you do? I'm not here, do you think I'm manipulating you? I'm asking you about the testimony you've given on your website and the testimony no, you've given You've about printed it. something off that you found on Reddit and you're going to sit here and say that that makes me a bad person. I'm saying that you should know better as a journalist and, and do some proper journalism. Let's investigate the fact that I thousands... I think you should answer my questions I am. properly. I, am. I already have, and we should move on. She's just trying to start arguing. It's not only about the criminal allegations. It's a, a much bigger issue. You've got children's organisations in the UK. You've got organisations in the UK. You've got the police naming you by name as someone who has a harmful influence on children and on women in the UK and elsewhere because of the things you say, because of the way you present gender relations, the way you say men should treat women. That's very upsetting. And the reason that's very upsetting is because I know that's not true. I'm genuinely a good person. I believe my impact on the world is positive. In fact, if you were to read the comment section of nearly any video I post, especially by the legacy media, 95% of the population agree with me. Most people know that the things I say are positive. Legacy media as a whole has lost all its credibility in the last three to four years. Nobody believes it. This is and true. And it's a shame, it's a massive shame that the BBC come here and try and push and purport this idea that I'm a dangerous person. I'm anti-drugs. I'm, I'm, I'm anti so I've never pu pushed drugs or any, uh, I'm anti-drugs, I'm anti-violence. The UK is facing a knife crime epidemic and they're well, gonna sit here and say, sense. they're gonna sit here and say that I'm the most dangerous man in the UK. You I want you guys to really think about what's being said there. We have rappers today that are actual serial killers, like a uh, documentary of uh, Vaughn that I just watched. And these are international rappers, as in worldwide, you know, hip hop. Everybody loves hip hop, worldwide. Encouraging people to kill, actually encourage them to do bad things. Uh, uh, Vaughn had a song about shooting up a woman. A rapper shooting up a woman, proudly singing it, playing on the radio, and it encouraged and pushed toxicity, but masculinity, free thinking, and being a strong man is the worst influence on young people. Guys, just really think about this. You, you really can't make this shit up. If it's, any, if it's never been any more obvious to you, now you know, now you see it. All right, let's keep listening. I'll say you're the most dangerous man in the world. I've said I'm the most dangerous man in the world. You've also said that a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner. I'm glad you find that funny. I find it funny that you're sitting here saying that I've said I'm the most dangerous man in the world and you, and you believe that's... When did I say that? I'm asking if you believe it. No, you said, you said, you said you're the most dangerous man in the world. Is that some kind of proof that I'm dangerous? Am I Dr. Evil now? I'm telling you that it's very upsetting that you're going to sit here and that certain organizations in the world are going to try and pretend that I'm the biggest force of evil on earth when I'm genuinely I'm a force for good. You have said. I'm genuinely a force Not for good. And the, and the reason they're doing this is because of the massive influence I have over the youth. And they don't like that I'm telling the youth 
to think outside of the matrix and ignore things like the BBC, which come here with loaded questions and false narratives and try and paint innocent people as, as, as guilty. You said women's intimate parts belong to their male parts. I said that if a woman marries a man, she takes his last name and traditionally the man gives her away. I've been pushing traditional religious beliefs, because I'm a religious man, and traditional beliefs in regards to marriage, which everybody accepted 10 to 15 years ago. So what, that's not, what that's you not, say? that's not a crazy conspiracy theory. If you're gonna sit here and say that me believing a woman should take a man's last name in marriage makes me the most dangerous man in the world, then you're just gonna lose even more credibility than the BBC's already lost in the last four to five years. If that's your point, if that's your narrative you, you wanna push, good luck. say that good men luck. should be able to sleep with a lot of women outside marriage. That doesn't sound very religious or that's very That's not what I said they should be able to. I said a lot of high value men, a lot of rich men do it. And then we discussed at length on podcasts why rich men do it. And we also discussed why women decide to be unfaithful. It's not a gendered argument. We discussed unfaithfulness as a whole. What are the reasons and motivations? Women cheat more than men. You know, I just had to throw that in there. You know, the cheating conversation, man, we got to catch up. We know what's going on out here, bro. For men, what are the reasons and motivations for women? Because you have no time to actually, you because you have no time to actually watch my content, because you have no time to actually watch my content at length, and understand what I'm saying, you just come here with a small snippet which has been provided to you on a piece of paper. Times doesn't make it true. No, completely. You don't have a clue what I say or what I talk about. You never watch my content. You have small you pieces of paper, small clips on a piece of paper, and you're trying to pretend I've said evil things. And then you're going to say I'm the most dangerous man in the world, which is truly laughable. You said that, not me. Okay. Do you believe you I'm the most say, dangerous man in the world, Lucy? I'm not answering your questions. Well then, we, well, then we need to change the dynamic of this interview because, and I'll make this clear. I, I wouldn't be surprised if um andrew tate actually did say he's the most dangerous man in the world because he says shit like that you know we, he's sarcastic i can imagine i'm the most dangerous man in the world yeah i i, I it doesn't sound like but what does that have to do with anything right he said a lot of things you know he said a lot of things many of them uh, come from you know a place of him being a certain character or, or him being an extreme in in the way that he presents his points etc and a lot of it is for entertainment value. And then there's the serious stuff that he actually means. And because he has those different dynamics, they want to blend all that in together so that people who are too stupid to realize that people can speak in different nuances and such, blend everything together and think, oh, you're serious, right? You actually are a bad person. Let's keep listening. I allowed you into my home. I'm, I'm doing you a favor, giving you the first interview I'm giving to the public. You don't come here with a position of authority. You're not the police. I don't respect the BBC. I don't know you. You do not come here with a position of authority over me. We are equals. We are people. We're citizens of the world. And we sit here as equals. And I see you as my equal. And if you ask me questions, I can ask you questions back. For you to come here and sit down and pretend you're the Gestapo and that you don't have to answer my questions is, is disingenuous because I don't owe you anything. You're asking questions and you answer But I don't owe no, however it, you want. This is a conversation and I don't owe you any degree of authority over me. So let's make that clear. And that doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or from the BBC or the CNN. Right. I'm here to you answer your say. questions and be honest with you and do you a favor. Great. But, and I'm doing you a favor, but you come here with loaded questions. You're trying to paint an narrative of me, which is negative. I'm asking you and about that's things fine. you've said that people are concerned about. And that's fine, you but you're not gonna sit here and say you don't answer my questions because you're not above me. This is also not supposed to be a third degree. It's supposed to be a conversation. Absolutely. Well, it, it would help if you answered the question. So it sounds like Here's how deceitful these mainstream companies, media companies are. It sounds like this was first agreed upon beforehand that this would be a conversation and not an interview. And I'm glad that they have this extra camera here so we can actually see the real conversation. And then she switches up in the actual interview and makes it sound like I'm not here to answer your questions when they already agreed it's a conversation. They're liars. They're liars, man. I said every question so far. Let me ask you another question. Sure. You have said that a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner, and if she goes on OnlyFans, he is entitled to a cut of her income. You are extremely, it's actually very, it's very conf confusing to me why you're going to sit here, take long format podcasts I've done, which are three or four hours long, in context where I've sat with OnlyFans girls, 10 or 15 OnlyFans girls, where we've been joking back and forth, ignore every comment and satirical comment and sarcastic comment that the females have made right. and then come along and say you said this and that and you're the most evil man in the world i don't know if you understand what sarcasm is I, I don't know if you understand what sarcasm is i don't know if you understand what context is i don't know if you understand what satirical content so you're saying are. it was sarcastic i'm saying it was a very interesting talk show 
And for you to sit here and say that that is my true core beliefs and that makes me is a bad it? person is disingenuous. Is it? Of course not. Was it sarcasm? Absolutely. So you should watch the show. You were being sarcastic you should, when you said, let me you just should, clarify. You okay? should watch the show. Let me clarify. She didn't watch anything. She didn't watch any show. She didn't watch anything long form. She did not. She's pretty much doing what everybody else has done in past interviews. For the audience, you were being sarcastic when you said a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner. No. You didn't believe that. No, it's not that. It's that you haven't watched the show at length, and you should have, because the woman was saying, my man's car belongs to me because he's my man. And she was on OnlyFans. And then 20 minutes later, when she said she was on OnlyFans, I said, ah, well, you're selling your body. That belongs to him because he's your man. And she laughed. Do she laughed. She laughed. And she said, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's probably true. If you, you watch the show, it? if you watch the show, it will make sense. So the OnlyFans chick laughed and said that's probably too true. It was more understanding than this woman. She wanted her to take offense to what he said when it made sense. The woman felt entitled to that man's car because it was his. And he says, well, then he should get a cut of your revenue from you being on OnlyFans, right? And somehow that makes him a uh, misogynist. For you to come here with doing no research at all and then say, I don't understand what I'm talking about, but I've got this piece of paper with a few things printed off. That's why you're saying the silly things you're saying. You should watch the show, do some research. Do you believe it? I've already answered the question. Not really. Of course yes, I have. Can we move on? I've answered the question. Do you believe that a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner? Of course not. I've just answered the question. You just answered that. Exactly yeah, we've done that three times. And, and, and does this woman believe that her... <laughs> Yo, this woman's nervous, man. She's getting cooked up in here. Man, drink the coffee, woman. Drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. Yes, sir. Let's go. Man's car belongs to her. We. It's, it's not a gendered argument. I really think that... It's genuinely sad that when the BBC has a chance to finally interview me at the end of all this matrix attack, mm. that they don't come here with any kind of genuine openness to try and understand my influence over the world or the things I push or what I'm trying to teach the world or why I'm a good influence on the world because I am a massively good influence. Instead, they come here with pieces of paper with printed out excerpts from five-year-old podcasts mm. taken out of context to attempt, the the same, to attempt the same matrix attack on me, which has been attempted endlessly Every single person in legacy, legacy media has already tried this and it doesn't work. You, I really encourage you, I encourage you to read the comment section on, the, on YouTube when this goes on YouTube. Oh, we're going to do that. Yeah, we do that over here. We read the comments over here. And guys, I'll even do the BBC a favor and read the comments underneath their condensed 12 minute video. So you guys can actually see that what he is saying right here is true. You will see that nobody believes a word you're saying. The this reason is garbage. I'm asking you about these comments is because we've got the chief executive of crisis naming you individually. All these names of chief executive of grape crisis and oh the police, all people, people who are probably paid off, people who we know if they don't support the mindless sheep mentality of most people who don't have the attention and don't want to do the due diligence to actually find out the truth about this specific situation or think that all men who are embracing their masculinity are evil. Of course, they're trying to cater to that group of people, especially if they are the chief of whatever, the the, the, the chairman of whatever, the, the vice president, all those guys, man, they're, they're, they can get paid off. If you're working with the BBC, most likely you are part of an agenda. It's just what it is, guys. I know that myself and most people, let's just be honest, we don't trust CNN, Fox, and these other news outlets. We just don't trust them. And they're starting to realize that. And the fact that when I read these comments underneath um, the BBC interview, the condensed version of this specific interview, you guys will be able to actually see that for yourself. Let's keep listening. A dangerous ideology of misogynistic culture. Absolute. It's the comments you make that are leading people to say things like Absolute this. Absolute garbage. National organizations who are saying that, are blaming you for increasing levels of misogyny. Schools that are saying they are having increased incidents of girls being attacked, of female teachers being harassed. If that was by true. pupils, if that, because of you and your teaching. Well, that's, and absolute, your influence. that's absolute garbage. I have never, ever encouraged a student to attack a teacher, male or female, ever. I preach hard work, discipline. I'm an athlete. I preach anti-drug. I preach religion. I preach no alcohol. I preach uh, no knife crime. 
Every single problem with modern society, I'm against. But I'm teaching know. young men. I'm teaching young men to be disciplined, to be diligent, to listen, to train, to work hard, to be exactly like me, with no criminal record, never even yet charged in this 14-month matrix investigation. And I'm saying that if men grew up like me, which are hardworking and diligent and some emotional control and stoic, we're gonna have a better society, not a worse society. To sit here and say that schools in England. England, which is a failing nation, which has knife crime going through the roof, violence going through the roof, men's mental health going through the roof, mm. and they're going to all blame me because I appeared on the internet you one year ago, is disingenuous. It's disingenuous. You and also, an also, financial it's, success correct. with a Bugatti and a cigar, but it comes with a side order of misogyny. How does having a Bugatti and a cigar come with misogyny? Because it's all mixed together in what you teach. You teach that a woman, if a woman comes home and accuses you of cheating, you should hit her with a machete, shove her off. Is that what I is that what I teach? That's what you say. No, if you actually watch the clip, so it will be about the woman attacking me with a machete. As usual, you've not watched the video, taken out of context, flipped it, and attempted to attack me with a small excerpt. Let me tell you something, Lucy. I'm sure you're a very nice person. I'm sure you're a fantastic person. But if I were to take everything I don't think so. <laughs> not, not from what I see, but hey, you know, no. And I'm not trying to get on her personally, but based on this, man, somewhere deep down inside, I hope she's sitting there thinking to herself, I might be on the wrong side of this. Or maybe she's not. You ever said online and just take small excerpts out of context, I could make you look like a misogynist. I guarantee it. In fact, I might, if, I might actually do that. And then you're going to sit here and say, oh shit, I'm a misogynist because my clips have been taken out of context. If you refuse to watch anything at length and understand it, the then that's police, what's going to happen. The National Police Chiefs lead for violence against women, the NSPCC, crisis, safer schools, they are all naming you as being behind an epidemic of misogyny, even amongst primary school children. The idea that I made primary school children misogynistic because I own a nice car. <laughs> Is that, is, that your, nice is that your argument? It's the misogyny that comes along with it. Oh, okay. owning a nice car is misogynist. No, it's the Go misogyny on. that comes along with it. How does misogyny come along with owning a nice car? Because you, you're, you have an image of financial I'm success. glad you're answering my questions now. We finally got the dynamic. You have an image of financial success. You answer my questions, success. actually, should. Excuse me. You have an image of financial success, but it comes along with attitudes towards women that are really problematic. My attitudes towards women is that women should be protected and provided for, and I've said that at length. In fact, I've said that over 50 times online. You never mention it. This chick is getting crushed. I say that my girlfriend doesn't have to work unless she wants to. I take care of her. I die to protect the woman. I've talked about how and I've stood up and faced a knife to protect a woman. And, and in return, you want authority over her in the way you have over a child or a dog. Absolutely say. not. I've said that women should be protected and provided for. And, and I in return, you want authority over her. Because if you have responsibility for someone like a child or a dog, you say, you have authority over them. If you want to go down this argument, we'll go down this nuanced argument. I said that if I have responsibility for her safety, I should have a degree of authority over her safety. Meaning, meaning, and let me explain my point. If I'm the one who has to fight and die to protect her, I'm the one who decides how we walk home. I'm the one who decides the route we take. Because it's unfair for her to say, I want to walk through the most dangerous neighborhood in the world, but you have to face the knives. That's what I've said. And then you're going to sit here and pretend I'm trying to treat women like dogs, which is garbage. Every single man, every single man in the world who loves this woman understands that he has to protect her. And every single woman in the world likes the idea of a woman, of a man who would protect her. If you were to say to most women home right now, do you want your husband to protect you in a violent attack? They'd say, yeah, of course. Nothing I've said is misogynistic. If you said to most women, would you want to lose authority in the relationship, to not be treated as a free and legal equal to your husband? Is this woman an idiot? I say that. I, I said I need to have authority over the when route we you, walk home. When you compare women and the authority over women that you believe you should have to having authority over a child or a dog, it's not the same because a woman is a free legal adult. Correct. You're equal. Free legal adult, my equal. But if I had a girlfriend and we were walking home late at night and I said, let's not walk down that area, it's a bad area, I have to protect you, everything happens, I want to take the long way. And she said, no, I will, I have to walk this way, even though it's the most dangerous route, I must. Then what? And then I would say, you're welcome to, you could do it, you're a free and legal equal, but I'm not going to walk with you and protect you. I think that I should be able to decide the route, because I have an obligation. And my obligation as a man is to protect and provide for females. Everything I'm talking about is, gen is traditional gender roles, which 10 years ago, less than 10 years ago, would not be considered outlandish, would not be considered crazy, would not be considered dangerous or misogynistic. He shut her up with that one. Do, does everybody need to be walked down that thought process of the protection, responsibility, without authority, slavery? Does everyone need to be walked down that concept? Why do women think they deserve the protection of a man and can run into a jungle of hungry lions? Come on, man. 
And I, I understand not all women think like this. In fact, the woman I'm with does not think like this. She understands it as a man, I will protect her. I'll put my life on the line for the people that I love, the women that I love, especially in my life, man. That's just how it goes. But there's no back and forth. They understand that, hey, I don't want to put you in a position where you're fighting for both of our lives. So I'll make wiser decisions to lower risk because I appreciate your protection, your love and protection. This woman over here is hearing this at her grown age for the first time in her life. <laughs> Somebody please make it make sense. Give this woman some coffee. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Let's keep watching. The world has changed, and a lot of people haven't changed with the world. Please understand there's a lot of women at home watching this right now who like the idea of their man sticking up for them, protecting for them, protecting them, and providing for them. And just because the world has gone crazy and the right. legacy media has gone crazy, most people at home are still relatively sane. Mm -hmm. And these are the people who are going to write on the comments that Andrew was saying there's anything that's outlandish. Yeah. 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 This is the whole world believes these things. I think that's Tristan Tate, man. Is that Tristan? Basically telling him, um, calling BBC out for what they're doing. I think that was him. Let's keep listening. That's fine. That's fine. I'm having a nice conversation with Lucy. I'm enjoying it. So it's no problem. It's been fun so far. It's fine. We good? Yes. Tell me when. Yes, I am. No, no. We didn't stop, no? I can do the clap. Now we good? No, no, no. Thank you. If a man broke into your house, wouldn't you want your, wouldn't you want your husband to protect you? There's a difference between conservative values and emotional control, coercive control. We're talking about concerns. protection now, and I'm saying if someone broke into your house, would you want your husband to protect you? It's not about conservative values or protection. It's what you're demanding in return for that. Well, I'll give you this. I don't know who your husband is. I don't know if he would stand up to protect you or die for you, but I'll give you this. Responsibility without authority is slavery. If someone broke into this house right now and was a homicidal maniac, I would expect me and the other men in this room to stand up and face them while you and the women, you and the other women in this room could protect yourselves. I would actually believe the men should go and engage the attacker. I believe that. And even though I don't know you, and you've come into my house with a hostile agenda, and you've come here to try and make me look bad, I've I would still, I would still stand up. I would still stand up to protect you. I would still stand up to protect you because I believe that's my role as a man. I am asking you about things that you have said that have caused major national organizations, including the police, to worry about you by name. The, That's what I'm asking you it's about. It's not what I said. It's not about whether you protect your partner or not. It's about what you have said that has caused such concern in the UK. And I want to put it to you that you don't really care about the harm it caused. That's not true. Because That's not true. making controversial statements like this online has made you a lot of money. Okay, so first thing, I genuinely am a force for good in the world. You may not understand that yet, but you will eventually. And I genuinely believe I'm acting under the instruction of God to do good things, and I want to make the world a better place. I genuinely believe my legacy is a good legacy, and I believe that eventually when the legacy media catches up, they're going to understand I'm a good positive influence. I'm not interested in damaging the world for money, because if I was interested in damaging the world for money, I could have sold drugs, or I could make rap music and encourage everyone to stab each other like all the drill artists do. Or you could make controversial statements online that attract a lot of followers who you then direct to your website, I could where make, they pay I could make to learn how to be sure, like you. I mean, I could, make, I could make jokes online. Who doesn't? I mean, I could make a joke online. Are you online. saying that all the controversial things you've said are jokes? No, I'm saying that these organizations and the BBC who are going to sit here and pretend that I am the face of damaging the youth is absolutely garbage. It's completely disingenuous. It makes and the money. reason, and the reason. I'm sorry, we have agreed to do an interview where you are going to ask questions that are going to give us the opportunity to clarify some things. These are very loaded I'm questions. Sorry. And so far, I'm, I'm sorry, I have arranged this and I'm talking right now. Woo, let's go. I think that thinking it's a lawyer that's stepping up there, a female lawyer who sees the effery, can't say the real word, but you guys see the effery happening in this situation. She wants it to stop. So these are very loaded questions, and this is not what we discussed, and this is not the conversation that we agreed We were to. very clear that the questions there, are, are sitting there, are our... You're sitting there and just accusing, we're not here to face new allegations. This has all been discussed, answers have been provided. So if we could please move on from this side of the interview, I would appreciate it. 
I would like to hear what Andrew's got to say. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> Guys, I actually think Andrew's doing a great job in this uh, first interview. I think this is perfect almost, right? Like, of course, they didn't learn anything. Of course, they're reinstilling the fact that nobody can trust any media outlet. You know what I would be asking? Andrew is like, wow, isn't it kind of crazy that they locked you up for that long and um, couldn't find anything? How is it like in there? Why don't you think they're they're able to find anything? What, what are you going to do now that it looks like you're probably going to be free? Those are the conversations that should be had. What do you have to say to all the people that thought that they would find a bunch of evidence and accused you of selling uh, drugs and all this stuff and the grape case that was thrown out that would be the interesting stuff to find out but no they're going back to shorts they're going back to shorts and small issues that have already been clarified all because they cannot drink the coffee i hate coffee it's so strong unfortunate let's keep watching about the fact that when you make controversial statements it attracts people to follow you and then you direct them to your website where they pay you a monthly fee to learn how to be like you. And so the more controversial statements you make, the more money you get. The fact that that's the path you've outlined to one, my online university, and two, my presence on the internet, the fact that you believe that's the path just shows you've done absolutely zero research. Gen gen genuinely zero research. Okay, so how many of the people who sign up for Hustlers University come to you through your social media? Genuinely zero reason. How and many I... of the people who sign up for Hustlers University come to you through your social media where you direct them to the website? And Lucy, I encourage you to go out there, do some genuine research, watch my Could videos, you my watch, of course, watch my videos at length and truly understand what I'm doing. How many of the people who sign up for Hustlers University at $49.99 a month come to you because they see your social media comments? There's an online school Called Hustles, called Hustles University, which I don't own, I influence for, along with many other influencers, and they sign up for your website, which I don't own. And once again, that's once again, once once again, once again, that's nothing to do with me. And you're going to sit here and say that I made a joke. You were the I made a joke online four years ago because a woman said that she owned her man's car, and you made a joke, and that means that you, because you have a Bugatti, are the most misogynistic, dangerous man in the world. This is going down a path of absolute insanity. It's not true. None of this is true. I don't hurt people. I don't harm people. I'm genuinely a positive you are influence. Renowned I'm, I'm renowned for offensive and controversial. That's not why I'm renowned. I'm actually renowned. Population. I'm actually renowned for helping young men because we talk about there's a men's mental health crisis and we talk about we pretend to care that men are upset. But as soon as I discuss men's issues, it's misogynistic. Mm. It doesn't have to be gender. Just because I believe men have a point of view and men have rights and men are allowed to think and believe and, and act a certain way that helps them internally, that doesn't mean it's anti-female. In fact, I believe it's actually pro-female. I think when a man is true to his influence and true to his essence and he's good within himself, he's a positive influence in the world and he's positive for the women around him. So Just because I discuss so men's women? issues, people say, oh, you're anti-woman. I'm not anti-woman, I love women. Why are so many women saying that when their boyfriends start following you, they're not. They experience more control. So many. They experience How many? more abuse. How many? Enough. 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 Well, this is the first time I've heard of it. So, in fact, one is too many. Uh, oh, of course, yeah. So, of, in fact, I've seen thousands and thousands of comments and have endless emails from women praising does the fact, worry you? praising the fact that their sons are listening to me, does it praising worry you? the fact that their husbands. Things are listening I'm saying does not worry. I think it's really funny that she's bringing up points like, oh, there are girlfriends out here whose boyfriends are starting to watch you and they're experiencing more control. You want to know how modern women label control today? If you as a man start respecting yourself and setting boundaries, you'll be looked at as controlling, right? And good, good for those men for being looked at as controlling. Why? Because I know they're not actually being controlling. What they're doing is they're setting boundaries as in for example he might decide i don't want to date a girl who has male friends who she goes on long date nights with and spends alone time and he doesn't want that why because he's setting himself up for failure she might cheat on you that may be viewed as oh now my boyfriend wants to control the type of parties i go to the type of friends i have the type of things i wear it doesn't have to control you what i tell men is if a woman doesn't want to get with your program you just walk away it's that simple what a women going to say he became controlling there's that explained if this chick a journalist for bbc cannot understand what i just explained 
as a man who has his own standards, because women are empowered for having standards. If she interprets that as control, what more the average woman who's just watching Vice and all these other um, false media outlets, what more their reasoning and rationale? Of course they believe that they're being controlled when they've never actually dated a man who's, who doesn't have any self-respect or their man has never shown that level of um, boundaries and realizes, hey, this is who I want to be and this is the type of woman I'm looking for, traditional, feminine woman who wants to cooperate with the man and the type of dynamic where she allows him to lead, etc. To that woman, yes, that will be an, a, a, a controlling environment. What should she do? Leave. Everybody wins. All right. Let's keep watching. It would worry. It would worry. About it it would. It would worry me if I was genuinely damaging the world. But for you to sit here and say, Andrew, you become the most googled man in the world. You have billions of views, and one woman, one, is now saying that her husband is I'm not the same man she wants him to be. When thousands and thousands of people are saying the opposite, well, then I would say I that that's. I presented you with case after case after case, with quote after quote after quote of people who are genuinely concerned about the impact you're having, and you brush it off as if it's nothing. No, what you have done is come here with an agenda. You've come here with loaded questions. You've come here with things taken out of context. You come here with things that you don't understand are satirical, and then you're going to also sit and say that one woman said that her boyfriend changed when he watched one of your videos, and and then I don't know what satirical you expect me to say to that. That's fantastic and jokes. No, that's how you explain no, the comments you no, make. For you to sit down. Would you like to apologize for any of that? Uh, for you to sit down. And <laughs> for you to sit down. <laughs> It's fine. No, it's fine. It's easy. For you to sit down and say that one woman said that I'm her boyfriend watched an Andrew Tate video. And Hold on. She wants him to apologize for that boyfriend. Oh, no, no, no. That girl whose boyfriend started to set boundaries or maybe he was just crazy. You can't control how people interpret stuff. It's like, I'm sorry um, that somebody watched my videos out of context based on probably these type of media outlets butchering it. That's ridiculous. How he won't do the dishes or, or whatever your, your argument is Police. and that I'm somehow the worst, most dangerous man in the world because I have a car. It's just disingenuous and I'm enjoying this interview very much because this shows, this shows the world. It's great. It shows the world the truth about the legacy media because they beg me for interviews. They beg me. You have been begging me for months. Please, you wow. need to be relevant. And then you come here with loaded questions trying to paint a picture of me, which is completely not only false. Wow. I am a good positive influence for the world. The things I teach men are stoicism, discipline, self-respect, hard work, obeying authority, listening to your fight coach, working hard in school, making as much money as possible in your job. If you actually watch the things I say, if you actually watch my comments about women, I've done long podcasts for hours long about females, talking about protecting for them, providing for them, how I believe women should be treated in a relationship. I've done all of this, but you don't watch any of it, and then you come here and ask me to answer questions I've answered at length thousands of times. Since mm. you came out of custody, there seems to have been a lot about your charity work. Correct. On your social There's media. Always, I've always done the charity work, but now I'm promoting it. There online. seems to be a real shift. Yeah. I wonder what's behind that. Well, I've always done the charity work. I've been doing the charity work for years. I believe that it's my legacy to leave a positive influence on the world, and I've been doing charity work for over five years. Post my incarceration, my unfair, unjust incarceration, may I add. Post that, I've made it more clear the charity work I'm doing. But this is, again, once again, very interesting. I spend $25 million a year feeding children, men, male children, and female children in, in Turkey, in Syria, in Iran, and Iraq. I literally spend $25 million a year feeding children, and I'm still the worst man in the world because, because four years ago I made a sarcastic comment. Because some people would look at that and say, okay, so before you got money from attracting people to your website by making controversial comments, but that might have got you into trouble, and so now you're looking for a new market. You're looking for a new market of followers who are attracted by a different sort of persona. I've always done the charity work, so that is obviously incorrect. And I have proof that I've always done the charity work, so you're wrong, firstly. I believe that if you have a lot of wealth, you should help people, and I'm helping people. I also think it's very, very interesting that you could not find another celebrity in the UK or anywhere else who's spending 25 million pounds a year feeding children in war-torn countries. I'm doing that, and I've been doing that for a long time without even mentioning it. I never even said it. And now that I've said it, people are going to attack me for it and say that it's disingenuous. Just the, the person in Sudan who's eating the meal, do you think they believe it's disingenuous? No, I think they, I think they feel pretty good that Andrew Tate fed them. And to sit here and say that I'm a bad person now because I'm manipulating charity, because I'm using charity, I'm just trying to do good in the world. That's all I've ever been trying to do. When women speak out against you online, disagree with what you say, 
they describe being bombarded with threats, with death threats, trolling by your followers. Would you like to say anything to your followers about sure. how to behave in that situation? Absolutely, correct. I would love to do that. First things first, I've yet to see a female stand up and, and argue with me online. I don't ever see hardly any. Well, only women who message me agree with me. Secondly, I don't think that anybody who disagrees with me, male or female, should be trolled. I don't think they should be insulted or attacked. I think the ideas should be discussed openly and fairly and maturely. It doesn't matter if a man agrees with me or disagrees with me or a female. I don't think my followers should come along and attack her. And if my followers are doing that, I'm upset by that. But let's make a very important clarification. That's not my followers. That's the internet. If you were to log into any video game lobby, I don't play video games, and someone were to sit there and say something stupid, they would be trolled with similar comments. That's the unfortunate reality of the internet as a whole. This That's is true. to do with me. But I encourage all of my followers to open to engage in open discourse and be fair and honest and talk in a way which is mature. There's no need to troll anybody, male or female. Okay. Cathy, any things? Um, a couple of things. <clears throat> I wonder if it would be worth giving Andrew one more opportunity to um, consider whether or not he would like to apologize or um, give um, you know, an indication of how he feels about the allegations that he has negatively influenced young people in the UK. And secondly, I think we should put on record that this interview is taking place in your house because you're under house arrest. If it were not for that, then we would have chosen another location, I'm sure. We would have negotiated that between us. So I think that's just worth putting on record. Okay. Um, so, just to put on the record then, you said that you've invited us into your house. Correct. We're here because you're under house arrest. Correct. If you were free to leave, we would have negotiated a more neutral setting. Don't you think, as the BBC, it would be very interesting to come here and discuss the fact that I was put in a dungeon for 92 days and then locked in house arrest without charge? Don't you think that's a far more interesting conversation than old YouTube snippets? Thank you. Why are they not addressing what just happened? The man was locked away and we, there were a lot of people out here who thought he was not getting out. A lot of people who are silent now that he's out. When he comes out, they don't even want to bring it up. Can it be any more obvious, people? Can it be any more obvious? Don't you think that would be interesting? You're here under house arrest because there's an ongoing investigation into and human trafficking allegations against you. Correct. I've been incarcerated without charge. And don't you think it has been dropped? has been incarcerated. Correct. So I am, I'm, I'm incarcerated without... Again, she, she said, the, actually, the grape allegation has been dropped. This chick... <laughs> oh, man. Charge, and I think that'd be a far more interesting conversation than, I guess, Julian Assange is incarcerated without charge, and nobody's interested in that either. So if you actually want to do some genuine journalism and investigation, we could talk about the fact that an innocent man who has yet to be charged with a crime has had his liberty deprived of him. And I think that would be a far more interesting angle than talking about me being the most dangerous man in the world because I own the car. And this question about schools being very worried about your influence. Yes. Boys in primary school or, you know, boys as young as 11 are quoting you at school, yeah. attacking girls, refusing to respect female teachers. Yeah. Would you like to say anything about that? I'd like to say a lot. First things first, as I've repeatedly said, and, I, and the only reason I keep repeat, repeating it is because I'm sure this interview will be edited. I am a positive force for the world. He said, I'm sure this interview will be edited. Not only was it edited, it was edited down to 12 minutes. I won't stop saying it, guys. Go watch the BBC version of this. It's just Andrew Tate starting off aggressively and trying to make this chick look as good as they possibly can. And they failed at that, too. I teach children discipline. I teach the world discipline, male or female, of any age. And a lot of women listen to me as well. 40% of the people who listen to me are actually female. Secondly, I do understand with my massive influence, and I am now the one of the most influential people on the planet, that I do have to be slightly more careful with things I say. I'm not going to disagree with that. The idea that I said something five years ago on a video that got 300 views. So what do you mean, being slightly more careful? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Some of the jokes I made four or five years ago on a YouTube channel that got 300 views, I would no longer make. Like I, what? Like the OnlyFans joke, the one you mentioned repeatedly, when she said, my man's car is my car. And then she said she did OnlyFans. And I said, what do you sell on OnlyFans? She said, my And I said, well, those are your man's As a joke, ha ha ha, everybody laughed. 
The point, the fact that I could do that on a podcast five years ago and only got 300 views, now I understand I'm the most influential man on the face of the planet. I would be more careful with certain things I say. That doesn't mean the things I originally said were genuinely out to harm people. Do you really believe you're the most influential man on the face of the planet? I'm the most Google person on the planet. Do you believe you're the most influential man on the face of the planet? I'm the most Google man on the planet. I think we're done. Yep. Thanks, Lucy. It was enjoyable. Nice to meet you. <laughs> She's pissed. No, it was fun. It was good. I enjoyed it. She's not, she's not angry because of anything other than she wasn't able to trap Andrew into saying something he would regret saying. De-mic me. I don't want to damage anything. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, nice to meet you. Goodbye. Oh, hold on. Like so, so this part, guys, Andrew is done with the interview and he's leaving. No, no, I'm sorry. The, the, the BBC crew, the film crew is leaving and he's walking over to Lucy, the woman who interviewed him, just to shake her hand and say bye. Thank you. Oh, nice to meet you. Refuses to shake Andrew's hand. He says, very polite staff you have at the BBC. See guys, this right here is genius. I think every person who's going to be interviewed by these mainstream media companies who are going to edit everything down to make you look bad or if there's any potential at all, you should bring your own camera to record the whole in interview if that's what they want. Because just this alone shows how disrespectful she was, the type of mindset she was in, and that she did not come to this interview to hear the truth. Her mind has already been made up. A lot of people's minds have already been made up. The possibility that Andrew Tate is not a rapist or he's a force for good is just way out of the question. They refuse to believe it. As always, guys, like I said, we're going to check out some of these comments. We're not going to check out comments from my video or anybody's video who actually watches the type of content I produce on my channel. We're actually going to check out the comments from the BBC themselves. Check this out. This is how much people went drinking the Kool-Aid mixed with tea, right? This first commenter says, Andrew Tate influenced me to stop being a lowlife and improve myself physically, mentally, and spiritually. I went from being a boy who had given up on life and society to a man who is disciplined, strong on a righteous path. This gentleman says, he's another comment that says, he is a positive force for the world. It's sad how the BBC is lying to frame him. Another commenter here says, Andrew has improved my life by giving me the knowledge and advice to overcome laziness and discipline. Thank you, Andrew. This commenter wants Andrew to know. And Tristan, may God help you win this case. Here's another comment that says, just for the record, she refused to shake his hand after the interview, as we just saw, out of spite. And the reason why this person is saying this is because they did not include that in the official 12-minute interview. Watch the full unedited version to see how non-neutral this journalist was. I'm disappointed at the lack of professionalism. Here's another comment from another person that says, watch the whole interview. And I have to say, he absolutely obliterated the interviewer. It was a joke to watch. He stayed calm, patient, and polite. I can say personally that Andrew has had a positive influence in my life. It's very clear how terrible and one-sided the journalism was. It was comically unprofessional, this commenter says. Good job, Tate, with the high five. Love how they posted and edited the clip with the laughing emoji. Another comment here says, a 40-minute interview cut down to a 12-minute interview. Andrew is a genius that he recorded the interview from his own camera. Yeah, think if, think if he didn't do that. Think if he actually didn't do that. Here's another comment that says, I want to take a moment to congratulate this woman on her retirement from journalism and choosing Andrew Tate to be her last BBC interview. <laughs> another comment here says, like he said, happy reading the comments here where more than 90% of people support and agree with him. In Tate, we trust, this commenter says, for Tate with Dan, what a role model he is. Hats off. 
both Tates, this commenter says. Another commenter here added, Andrew Tate is the reason I'm out of depression, studying hard and working hard. He's the reason why I'm trying my absolute best to become better than I ever was. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Um, another comment here says, dude, Andrew saved my life and now I'm on the way to making life better for my family, all because he saved me and taught me. Listen, do you need any more proof to see that the world today, the world today wants to believe that strong masculine men are evil and are bad people. But to address this specific situation, as far as Andrew Tate's case, as long as there's no evidence and as long as they're not lying and fabricating and going off people's feelings, Andrew and Tristan Tate need to be set free. And I'm not somebody who has any type of personal relationship with any one of them. I just believe that if you're going to make these type of terrible accusations to any man out here, we need proof. Because again, guys, you may never think it may happen to someone who you know, but that's the world that we live in as men today. As always, I'm curious to know, what do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. I appreciate you for checking out yet another episode of The Coffee Pot. Till next time, I'm out.